every 23rd spring for 23 days, it gets to eat. And unfortunately, it is the 23rd spring, 23 years following the conception of the creeper. And it's been a while since I've discussed or talked about the creeper. So I'm going to unpack my thoughts now. Not many things outside of the real world, and I'm going to be honest, can really encapsulate the feeling, the isolating feeling or fear the creeper had on me as a child when I watched it, because it stood like a man and it blended like a scarecrow, but it molded the fit perfectly in plain sight. And it was very symbolic of a human being powerless, because when it could smell fear and it could find it, those who feared it, once you have something at once, it always got it and it would never, ever stop trying. And to this day, I can't really get over how the creeper abolished the principle of belief and turning religion, the the home of Christ, the body of Christ, uh, the home of faith into a place to store dead bodies was always very brutal because church would represent not only a building, it would represent a community, uh, people. But the film kind of flipped the whole idea, which was so effective looking at it today as as an adult now. But while I was young, I never really thought too much about it. Like even driving past and seeing an old rundown church with someone or something and some dirty black clothes throwing something down a well innocent enough until that thing stares right back at you as you drive by it was kind of a substitution of probability with no luck you know a merciless evil misunderstood lore of a monster with some weird ticking human consciousness it was pure evil and pure fear and it's not a situation i could imagine handling well at all and i oftentimes forget just how evil the creeper really was because while we refer to it as jeepers creepers it wasn't always that way as in germany they referred to the film as dinner is served and france it was the devil's song but in poland it was actually called gourmet and sometimes i fail to remember that beyond this supernatural monster was a movie about some sort of monster eating people's bodies that just sometimes slips my head the film made it clear that even when you feel most safe you're not you know if you're in the comfort of your family or your home or if you're in a bus blending in with 20 different people once you see that long coat it's probably going to be the last coat you ever see it's so remorseless and it acted on ancient animalistic craving for human body it's not been confirmed but speculation points to the probability that the creeper was actually based on the mayan god kamazots In the first film's climactic ending scene, a slow-moving camera penetrates the Creeper's workshop, which created such a sense of suspense because we anxiously have to anticipate the sights that will await us knowing everything we've known about the film so far. But the workshop itself becomes some epitome of horror, layers of damp hallways, corroded pipes barely illuminated by any light at all. And on top of this, we have to hear the notorious jingle of the Creepers song echoing through the background accompanied by distant screams. But the ending was so terrifying and it can't be forgotten, but the most chilling moment would reveal itself when the camera pans to Darry's sightless eyes, cruelly removed, and the film concludes with a haunting image. It's the Creeper penetrating, slowly burned through the vacant eye socket of Darry's skull. And while many of the kills don't happen on screen, this would leave us with the horrific reality that worse things probably have happened to hundreds of other people. I don't know if anyone else knows this. Well, no, a lot of people probably know of it, but you might not specifically. There's a deleted scene in the first film, which has the Creeper speaking and calling out Darry's name, which, I mean, they didn't use it in the end because it was eventually removed. It was probably just not right for the film. But it leaves you kind of wondering how the Creeper would know his name because it was never shown. But theories would suggest the Creeper takes on the memories of those it eats. Like, let's say, I mean, it's silly to say it, but let's say, for example, that the Creeper did eat Kenny and Darla. Um, then the Creeper somehow knew of Darry because Darry would have known them in school or something. I mean, I highly doubt it, but it's, it's an interesting thought. And I can't put into words how disturbing the film was to watch at a young age. And I know I'm probably not the only one who has watched it at a young age. I probably shouldn't have watched it when I did. I was not even 11 years old, but I did. And it spawned nightmares about the creeper for years on end. I talk about it before. And I really haven't ever been so terrified of any piece of media or film like I have with this. And I'm struggling to to really accurately even describe nevertheless study what the creeper could have been because part of me doesn't really want to know you, you know like i've i've 
done this exact video i've been writing this for almost a month now and i'm reading every article i'm, I'm looking at comics but there's no real way to study this the character i have nothing to say i studied film production you know i understand uh how to analyze films but to understand this character is just something I don't think we could ever do. You know, it was made purely to be evil and to be rare and to be far from common. So I don't think there's any way I could really accurately put it into words. Like how something like this could blend into society enough to prevail for as long as it did. You have to imagine these custom license plates be eating you. Uh, for example, they have to come from a shop and the thought of how it can get there or how it could go through the whole process of filling out paperwork or such. It, it just how would that have even went down and then it comes to the second film with the opening of billy taggart being taken from his family it's just like how could something so dangerous and so non-human blend in so well and for so long to go unnoticed to be a lore to be a myth you know not to be something that people talk about people aren't talking about it it just happens and no one knows what it is it's just truly fucking terrifying like i've never liked being alone and when i watched the second film i never liked it when i was a kid or as an adult today it's scary but it's Think about being a young kid being ripped away from your family on an idle Tuesday by something non-human. It frightens me.